Today's lesson will involve quadrilaterals in polygons, which are basically shapes that we can use our protractor to make because they're made up of lines, in some cases parallel lines, and angles. Now one thing to keep in mind is that quadrilaterals, just like a quad muscle or an ATV or a quad, have four wheels. Quad muscles, four muscles. Well, quadrilateral is going to be made up of four sides, that key word being quad, which means four. So let's have a look at some of these quadrilaterals, and then we'll look at some other polygons later on in the lesson. We're going to first start off with what's called a trapezoid. And a trapezoid can be identified because it has, well, four sides because it is a quadrilateral. But what really makes it stand out is that it has one set of parallel lines. So if we look at our trapezoid, we can see that the bottom and the top line here with the arrows going that way designates that they're parallel lines. They run the same way. Let's look at what's called a parallelogram next. It's also a quadrilateral because it has one, two, three, four sides, but what sets it apart is it has two sets of parallel lines. And we can see that by the double arrows going this way and then our standard arrows going that way. Our sides here are both parallel to each other and then our top and bottom are running parallel to each other as well. So if we think back, trapezoid, one set of parallel lines. Parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines. At the bottom, this is a shape that's familiar to most of us. It's just a regular rectangle. And what makes a rectangle so special is that it has one, two, three, four right angles. So a rectangle is made up of four right angles. And we know that right angles are all worth 90 degrees. So now let's look at some other polygons and quadrilaterals. The next set of quadrilaterals that we're going to look at are called a rhombus and something that's familiar to us as well, the square. Let's have a look at the rhombus first. Rhombus is basically a parallelogram. So remember, it has two sets of parallel lines. What sets it apart and makes rhombus special is that it has two sets of congruent lines. And if we remember congruent back from angles and triangles, congruent will mean the same. So basically, a rhombus is a parallelogram, two sets of parallel lines. However, it has two sets of lines that are equal lengths. For example, this line here on the bottom would be the same length as the top. This line on the left would be the same length as the one on the right. So now let's come over and look at a square. Now a square, much like a rectangle, has four right angles. What makes a square a little bit different from a rectangle is that all of the sides are the same length, and that's designated by these red lines here. So I know that this top line is not only the same length as the bottom, but it's also the same length as the one on the right and the one on the left. So remember, what separates a square from a rectangle is that all of the sides are the same length. Now that we've learned a little something about quadrilaterals, Let's find out how to find a missing value within a quadrilateral. If we think back to triangles, we learned that the area or inside of a tri triangle, if I measure up all three angles, was always equal to 180 degrees. Now, quadrilateral is similar because I've got four sides that I want to add up, but it's not going to equal 180 degrees. It's actually going to equal 360 degrees. So in this case, I want to solve for x. So I'm going to use a familiar formula. What I'm going to do is add up all of the degrees that I have, and then I'm going to subtract that from 360. That's going to help me find x. So we know that combined, all four angles must equal 360. It has to equal 360 degrees. So let's start by adding together what we have. Well, I'm going to take 135. And we will add to that 110. And then to finish it off, we'll add 100. Well, we notice it's pretty simple. That turns into, stays 5. 3 plus 1 is 4. Add up our 1s, we get 345. Now I'm going to want to take my 345 and subtract that from 360. That'll give me what I'm missing, which is x. So let's do that right here. We've got 360, remember total degrees of the quadrilateral, and we are going to take 345 away from it. Do the math. 
we'll end up with an answer of 15 degrees, which means x equals 15 degrees. Now, if I'm unsure of my work, I can go back and check by plugging 15 degrees in and then adding up all four measurements. If together they equal 360 degrees, then I know I did the problem the right way. We're going to finish today's lesson by looking at polygons. Polygons are also shapes, but we're going to see they're a little bit different from quadrilaterals because now polygons can have more than four sides. So we're going to look first at what's called a pentagon. And the key is to look at the prefix of the word penta, which means five. So a pentagon is going to be any shape made up of five sides. So we can count them out together. One, two, three, four, and five. Pentagon, five sides. Next, we're going to look at a hexagon. Prefix hexa meaning six. So this is going to have six sides. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we can think of this, always an easy one to remember. Octagon, prefix meaning eight octa, like an octopus, eight limbs. It's going to have, guess right, eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're going to finish with something that is called a regular polygon. And now what a regular polygon is, it's a shape of course, but it's made up of three congruent sides that also have three or equal amounts of measurement. What I mean by that is a regular polygon doesn't have to be a triangle. It can be any shape, like let's say maybe a square, where all of the sides are the same length, and that's noted by this line going through the sides, but not only are the sides the same length, the angle are also the same. The measurement, I should say, of the angles are also going to be the same, and we can see that designated by the measure of the angle, that arc drawn in there. So for example, if I were to also have a square, that's a regular polygon. We know it's a regular polygon because all of the sides would be the same, the line going through it that way, and all of the angles would be the same. In the case of a square, well, it has to have equal lengths to become a square, and we also know that a square is made up of four 90-degree angles. So it's definitely a regular polygon because all of the angles are the same at 90 degrees, and all of the lengths have to be the same in order for it to be a square. So keep in mind, a regular polygon has equal lengths inside and equal angle measurements.